Bobby Lopez here from quickfixgolf.com, where we want you to play better golf now. Right now. Here it is, video number two on this fine book here, Ben Hogan. The five lessons on the fundamentals of golf. It can be somewhat confusing. So we figured we'd go ahead and do a little expose on different sections of the book to clarify stuff for you so you better understand it. It's a good book. It's just like it confuses a lot of people. You got to understand behind, what's behind door number one. And we're going to tell you. Here's my partner here, Darren DeMaley. Myself, a business partner, you got to say today. <laughs> there we go. Ben Hogan, five lessons on the fundamentals of golf. What are we going to cover? Pages 116 and 117, the grip. Mucho importante, O. See that? You want to speak Spanish? All you got to do is add an O. Bank, banco, car, caro, golf, golfo. Pages 116, 117, the grip. And also pages 102 and 103, which they call a release. And I don't know why we call releasing the golf club a release. It doesn't mean let go of it. It hits somebody in the head. It really means uh, how the golf club moves through the, through, the, through the impact area. Do you rotate your forearms over? Do you flip your hands? What's going on? Because those things are going to match the grip. And we're going to look at some swing analysis. Now, look at, look at how I spelled Ernie. <laughs> you want to know why this is the only book I read through high school? <laughs> and Ernie Hills and Dustin Johnson, who have totally different paths through the, through the hitting area. And they match up to their grip. So when I'm looking at somebody, if you go ahead and video your swing and upload it with our app or attach it to an email at quickservice at quickfixgolf.com, uh, the first thing I'll look at is how you go through the hitting area, not necessarily what your grip looks like. Then I want to see whether the grip matches the, 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 you know, the, the motion through the ball. Here's Hogan's uh, description. And Hogan weakened his grip somewhat before and after the accident or somewhere thereabouts. And you look at this right-hand grip on the golf club, you see where the crease is. So I'm going to better describe this in a minute. But you've got to really hustle to get back to that line. If the club face is pointed straight, let me let me use a little. Oh, come on, you stinker. Here we go. If the club face is pointed straight that way, and your grip is the way it is, the way he shows his right now, you've got to get all the way back to this position to have the club face squared. If you don't get there in time, the club face is going to be open. And that's why they call it a weaker grip. If his crease was further off towards his right shoulder more, you'd only have to reach that line, not this line. So they call that a stronger grip. Especially right here with the left hand, he shows this angle going towards the right shoulder, which is good. But the thumb is a little weak compared to what the younger players are today. Most of them are a little more over towards the 2 o'clock position rather than 12 o'clock where he has it there. You know, we'll explain more of this in just a minute. Here's what he did so quickly right here. This motion right here. He would rotate that forearm. As the old pro that taught me how to play used to say, it's not the right hand over, it's the left hand under. Was it Hal Sutton that said, catch a raindrop with your left hand? Because you rotate the forearm. This, this position right here with the arrows pointed, that's open. He's rotating, rotating, and bulging that left wrist, which is excellent. You get a much better feel and impact. Hit the ball a lot crisper. And you deal off the golf club slightly, so you turn a six iron into a five and a half iron. Hmm? And uh, he's always famous for this picture of him bulging the wrist like that. I try to do that. I mean, I've always wanted to try and keep... My, the bulge on the, 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 uh, the part of the wrist, the left hand ahead of the club head. Nothing wrong with that. Let's move forward here. Now, here's an example of a really strong grip and a really weak grip. And what it is you have to do to match up with either one of them. Over here, 
you'll see that. Let me see if I can get my little. Here it is. The club face, as I said before, straight. You're not blind. You're going to put the club face down there, pointing where you want to go. Same thing over here. Club face is here. What's, what's not matching up is the crease in the right hand of the club face. In this instance, the crease is back this way, so you only have to get from here to there to square the club face up. Once you reach that line, that club face is going to be straight. Here, which we call it a weak grip, with that crease all the way over on the left side, you got to go all the way to here to get that club face back to square. Because if you don't, for every degree that you are short, you're going to be open one degree. So you got to really hustle with this grip over here. Here, you've got to keep the back of the left hand moving because if you let the right hand rotate over, you're going to hit it so far to the left, you'll never find it. Hmm. Now here's DJ and Ernie Els. Let's take a closer look by getting on the V1 here. Whoops. Right here, I've got Ernie and Boo Boo. Well, let's put Johnson up here. Here we go. There's Ernie Els. You see how his crease is almost pointed straight at his nose? So that requires that he rotate. See his hands? Now, if you look at Dustin Johnson, it isn't that his crease is way over to the right causing the club face to close. He closes it with the way he takes the club back. You know, how you do it doesn't matter. It's close is close. See? Look at this club face. You could put a martini glass on here. Shake it, not stirred. Here you can see all of Ernie's club face. So Ernie's got to square that club face up. He rotates over. DJ keeps the back of his left hand rocking. See, he never allows that right hand to come over. Now usually guys that have that kind of move are... are Definitely afraid of the left side of the golf course. Hmm. Ernie might feel like, hey, I'm so open at the top, I can slam my hands over as much as I want, I can't hit it left. Nicholas used to grip the club a certain way with his left hand so that he couldn't get the hands to go over. He had a weak left hand grip. They want to eliminate one side of the golf course. To look at it closer, see, look where the crease is. Look at his hands rotate over. Let's go over here, and I'll show you another one. How about Azinger? Look at his grip. Maron, seen a better grip on a Miller Lite. So he's got this crease way over here. Same thing with his left hand. Big time. He's going to hit it so far to the left, he'll never find it. Uh, no, oh, no, wait a minute. He did something. What did he do? Look at his, look at his hands. Look at, look at his hands. Look at his hands. See? See? So you got to look at that impact area and also see, you know, because if you start changing his grip and he still goes through the impact the way he's doing right now, he'll hit it so far to the right, he'll never find it. <laughs> so you can't just, you know, that's why so many people get so messed up when they mess with their grip. They don't realize you're messing with your grip. You got to mess with the impact position. The best thing is to go the other way around. Try and match the impact position if, if the path of the golf club is pretty good. You might have more success by just trying to match up that than trying to change the grip and now change the entire golf swing and everything about it. That's where I think a lot of people get in trouble. Here's what you need to do. Go ahead and video your swing 
And try and do a close-up of your hands also. If you can't do a close-up video, attach it to an email at quickservice at quickfixgolf.com or download our app and upload it on the app. But if the app's not your thing, just go ahead and email it. We'll take a look at it and get it right back to you. And I'll be able to tell you, hey, with the way you go through the golf ball, uh, I'd be careful about this grip thing. Or I might say, guess what? Your path is so bad. <laughs> Make a rat's tail. Why don't we just go ahead and change everything right now while we can? Well, at least you'll know. At least you'll know. Quickfixgolf.com.